good morning it is Saturday the 3rd of March 2018 <clears throat> so the roads are still covered in snow but it stopped snowing and I think the big storm is essentially over um, I woke up this morning in absolute agony I've got like pain over the whole like this whole side of my face kind of like a migraine behind that eye and that eye is just like really blurry and can't see clearly out of it and then on top of that my neck has gone at a really weird angle and without the neck brace I can't even lift my head couldn't even lift my head off the pillow it's just stuck at this horrible angle and all the muscles are really tense and I just can't move it at all um, and the shoulders drop down more again so I've just sort of tilted more to the side I don't know why these things happen I, uh, I didn't do anything um, sorry I've just got to cover that eye because <laughs> the pain's too bad but yeah I didn't do anything to cause this I just woke up this way all I can think is that using the trolley because I've been leaning over it with sort of putting a lot of the weight my weight onto my arms um, that that's maybe caused an injury that way that's sort of built up over time but anyway I'm just going to lie back down in bed and not move for quite a while. Like I say, my vision's like really blurry in this eye, so I don't, I'm not sure how that links to the whole neck and shoulder being dropped. Can you see this? That eye's quite normal. And then the one that's really painful and blurry is kind of like looks all swollen and squinty. Hello, so after my carer came and made me a cup of tea and having a hot bath and wearing the neck brace for a while, I'm feeling a bit better, well enough to sit up um, and listen to an audio book, which is a good start. I've just got a hot chocolate here. Whenever I take the neck brace off, my neck just like tilts really badly so I have to keep it on to be able to stay upright but the migraine has died down a bit which is nice it's really frustrating when things like this happen because I plan out how much work I need to do each day um, and then I get up in the morning and I feel like this and I can just barely stay upright let alone um, get any drawing work or work done on my essay so I just end up losing so much time hopefully I might be able to do a couple of hours work this afternoon if I can recover a bit more just going to go back to my audiobook. I'm listening to a series of books I really enjoyed when I was a child, about 10 or 11. Um, the Lemony Snicket series of Unfortunate Events. It's just 
easy to follow when you can't concentrate well and you have a terrible migraine. <laughs> bye bye for now. One question. What is that? Uncle Mochi said. What's in that cage with the cloth on top of it? Uncle Monty looked at the cage and then at the children. His face lit up with a smile of pure joy. That, my dears, is a new snake which I brought over for my last journey. Gustav and myself are the only people to have seen it. Next month, I will present it to the herpetologic detective and a fine cook. But she flies into a rage if you arrive even five minutes later than her invitation states. So you understand that I had to dash off. You must have thought at the end of the previous chapter that Sonny was dead and that this was the terrible thing that happened to the Baudelaire's at Uncle Monty's house. But I promise you, Sonny survives this particular episode. It is Uncle Monty, unfortunately, who will be dead. But not yet. As the fangs of the incredibly deadly viper closed on Sonny's chin, Violet and Klaus watched in horror as Sonny's little eyes closed and her face grew quiet. Then, moving as suddenly as the snake, Sonny smiled brightly, opened her mouth and bit the incredibly deadly viper right on its tiny scaled nose.